I'm Mark James. Welcome once again to another edition of the Beach Grove Scouting Report conversations with Beach Grove head football coach Mark Weller. And uh, if he seems to be set a little higher in the chair this week and has a little broader grin on his face, uh, the Hornets are now two and one. And coach, not only a conference win, uh, but a win over your old stomping grounds, a win over a lot of dear friends. Uh, pretty impressive display in what, 50-21 over the Speedway Spark Plugs Friday night. Congratulations. Thank you, Mark. You know, that was a huge win for our program. And, you know, certainly personally, a lot of good friends there. And, you know, that was a fun one for me. But really proud of our kids. You know, we haven't beaten them since 1996. Um, and this was a probably the biggest mental hurdle that we've overcome since I've been here and that, you know that's a gives us huge momentum going forward. It's interesting you should say that because if, if, if we think back to the show a week ago I think you and I touched on that very thing maybe not on the air but off the air we certainly discussed the the prospects of of this win being that win to say okay guys it's time now it's it's okay to, to, to beat Speedway and it's okay to be successful. And you know and that's a big part of us being successful you know our mental makeup going into a game you know we can compete with people and uh, just having that confidence to get it done is huge for our kids well let's let's break the game down a little bit you and I talked before we before we went on the air uh, you took control of it right away uh, we really did um, we came right out with uh, all guns blazing uh, defense you really came through for us um, you know a couple breakdowns to lead to scores but they were a difference maker. Um, our offensive line allowed us to run the ball, um, and we ran it very effectively, um, which we hadn't done in the past two games. You know, and that was a big difference for us. Now we talked a little bit about Speedway going into the contest. We know they would be. We knew they would be strong at linebacker. Always are. Knew that they would have a stable of forces uh, in the backfield at running back. Was that pretty much what you saw with Speedway Friday night? Exactly what we saw. You know, they uh, had the same type of kids in both of those spots. Um, they had nothing to really surprise us, and you know, our kids really rose to the occasion. And again, one more time, we'll touch upon this and kind of let it go from a mental standpoint. You and I talked about a year ago, uh, there's a young man playing football at Speedway High School who's now at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, where Franklin is a member, just graduated two players that were among the best that conference has seen in quite some time. And, and Johnny West and Kyle Linville, those are Speedway grads. Uh, have your kids grasped the importance and the significance of this win, do you think? Um, I think it's starting to settle in a little bit. You know, they have great tradition. And, um, you know, we're trying to establish our own here. But uh, I think it's, uh, I think they realize what they accomplished. Yeah, talking a little bit about your personnel, uh, from, from what I gather and glean over the first couple of weeks of the season, uh, it seems like uh, Chase Sanders, your sophomore quarterback, is playing like anything but a first year starter and a sophomore. Oh, he really is. He's, uh, he's a difference maker, a difference maker certainly for us. He'll, he is one of the best in the area, and by the time he's a senior, he'll be scary. Have we seen a kid at Beach Grove uh, in recent memory uh, that has put in the time to change his physical makeup more in one season than he has? I mean, he was athletic when he came here as a freshman, no question. But boy, the first time I saw him uh, toward the end of the summer when school started, I'm like, yikes. I mean, that, that kid, I don't think people can really fully appreciate the amount of work he's put in in the offseason to make himself bigger and, and faster and stronger, which is the desired outcome. To me, the best thing about Chase, he's a complete package. Obviously, he's a great athlete, um, but he works extremely, extremely hard in, in his conditioning, um, but also mentally. Um, you know, he's, he's a student of the game. He understands what we want, uh, tremendous attitude. He's a straight A student. I mean, he is one of those uh, rare kids that come along. Well, and uh, as I, I, I cover uh, football games from a media standpoint, and so I'm, I'm constantly checking stats. And, and not only was it satisfying when I, when I looked at uh, some of the state statistical leaders uh, going into last week, not only did we see Chase at the top, but uh, Jamal Brumfield is putting up some incredibly gaudy numbers through the first couple of games of the season. He really has. He's a, he's a tremendous athlete. And uh, Speedway did a nice job of um, – kind of taking him away from us you know they kind of set their defense uh, to you know really stop him they did a nice job of slowing him down and our other kids rose to the occasion and our running game came through and you know it's hard to stop both who are some of those kids um, up front 
Uh, we have uh, Jarrett McCoy leading us at center, uh, does a tremendous job for us. He's, a, he's become a real leader for us. Um, at right tackle, Ricky Skirvin has done a great job for us, you know, leading us. Um, Nathan Havlin, who's been injured, you know, he's come through. Uh, Ricky Shockley has been a great surprise for us uh, this year. He has um, really done a nice job of um, stepping up and uh, playing hard in a pretty tough position. Um, Hovercat, Austin Collins, you know, as a kid who's playing both ways for us, has done a nice job um, offensively. And uh, Dorian Robinson mm -hmm. has been another kid with a nut, uh, who's been a nice surprise for us. Uh, is doing, we're asking a lot of him, but he's really risen to the occasion. Now you hold them to uh, to 21 points on the night, and uh, because of the fact that he's been around here so long, I would imagine that uh, your defensive coordinator Jim Cross was pretty happy after Friday and Saturday. He, he was extremely happy. He and Troy Edwards did a great job of uh, preparing our defense. And uh, the neat thing about it, um, you know, like we had a, a blown coverage, you know, or two, you know, which led to scores, but the overall aggressiveness of our defense and the way they attack Speedway was uh, fun, and I know Coach Cross liked that. I don't think you'll ever have a player in this program that has more enthusiasm for the game of football than your defensive coordinator, Jim Cross, has as coach. That's true, and it's, it's contagious. Mm -hmm. I mean, he brings it to the field every day. It's in the weight room every day. Um, he's a fun guy to coach with, fun guy to have around, you know, and the kids love him. Who, uh, who were some of the difference makers for you defensively? Um, again, Ryan Ward um, came out and uh, had a great game. Um, ben Neff and uh, Nathan Havlin, our linebackers, uh, really came out and uh, did a nice job. Chandler Farrar, who I think um, will be an all-state player for us this year, certainly all-conference. Um, he's a kid that um, you can't single block, mm -hmm. and, you know, and it's kind of right there at nose guard is kind of an unsung hero, but he really is a difference maker in um, helping our defense go. Well, let's talk a little bit about the, the, how, the, how the game broke down itself and, and, and the challenges that come. Uh, folks may not be aware of this, but, but because of the inclement weather that moved through on Friday, uh, the game was, uh, was postponed. Uh, and, and, or suspended, I guess, would be the more accurate term. And then we went back on Saturday and finished that up. So what was the score when we left? And talk about the challenges from that point forward to the back of your mind. How am I going to get them focused? How am I going to get them jacked back up, you know, for Saturday morning? It was 28-14 uh, when we left. Um, and we were, you never know, you know, how kids will react. Sure. You know, coming back the next day, we talked on the way home about continuing that focus and we have to come out just like we you know we're score zero to zero and uh, you got to give the credit to the seniors you know we came out um, again all guns blazing and uh, really shut them down early that's uh, that's a difficult set of circumstances folks to keep those kids first of all you got to worry about them getting home and getting in bed and doing what they're supposed to do then everybody getting back here the next morning so we can put the wraps on this and and, and this is not a negative it's certainly a positive boy you're an eyelash away from being three and0 in in this conference we really are we really are you know and we're not going to dwell on the past but our big thing is our mental makeup and if we can take care of the mental mistakes, um, this will continue to be a tremendous year. Well, uh, they talk about, as I said, the Mick Conference. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I mean no disrespect to the big dogs. But in terms of one, two, three, and 4A football, uh, and I'm not thrilled with the process that, if I can editorialize here, that, that classifies this as a 4A school. It's more like a 3A school, but that's the hand we're dealt, we'll deal with it. But when you look at conferences outside of the MIC, I don't know that you find one anywhere that offers more of a challenge week in and week out than this one does. Look no further than you can't spend much time celebrate this big win over Speedway because you've got Aunt Hurley and the Cecina Crusaders next on your list. Right, uh, celebration was over early Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, Cecina um, is a young team this year, uh, but it's a typical Ott Hurley team. You know, they're very well coached, extremely aggressive. Uh, they will do some things offensively and defensively that will give us troubles, you know, so we really have to rise to the occasion Friday night. Uh, now, I, I think we've watched week in and week out, uh, you know, Lutheran looked like they were on a roll 
Triton Central said, wait a minute, not so fast. Uh, Cardinal Ritter has struggled a little bit. Uh, not really sure where Monrovia sits in terms of the conference because, you know, they, they lost to Ritter in an overtime game, then went outside of the conference for a couple of weeks. Uh, they have Triton Central this week. Uh, you've seen Cecina on film. You've seen Park Tudor. Uh, we talked about it going into the season. We had a sneaking suspicion this conference is as wide open as, as it has ever been. Do your kids realize that? Um, I think they're, they're, they see that. You know, we, we have talked about that on a number of occasions, and it really is wide open. You mm -hmm. know, and we happen to have ourselves in a, in a good slot. You know, hopefully we can uh, continue to take advantage of that, but it's anybody's ball game at this point. Let's talk a little bit about the overall health of your ball club, probably nicks and bruises. I know we may have had some issues with maybe some cramping on Friday night because of the humidity level. That shouldn't be a concern this Friday night, but... Uh, uh, we 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 dealing with any walking wounded this week? Uh, we're healthy this week. Good. Um, really, the first time all year. Um, kids are very well conditioned, and cramping really wasn't a problem for us uh, Friday night, which you know is a credit to Coach Cross and his uh, conditioning program. But uh, we're right now. Um, Jamal Brumfield's a little nicked, but he'll be fine Friday night. Do you see? Uh, we're we're taping this on a Tuesday morning of the Cena week. Uh, Monday's practice. It, I, I know from my experiences as coach, that Monday practice after a win is a heck of a lot more enjoyable than a Monday practice after a loss. Oh my gosh, is it, <laughs> is it ever? And you know, talk to the kids about yeah. that. But uh, they're a little more pep in the step. You know, kids are laughing. Uh, there's a lot more um, encouragement going on. Uh, better spirit out there. So it's uh, it's much better. I know how hard you work at this deal, and and I know that you've already put Speedway in the rearview mirror. But again, congratulations! I know that's a big win for your kids, and you're happy for them. But I, I'm happy for you because I know it's a big win for you too. It's a special win for me and our program. Mark Weller, our head football coach. Best of luck. Uh, we want to talk to him next week about the three and one Beach Grove Hornets. They'll take on Cecina this Friday night. Uh, that's our show for this week. So long for now.